Chapter 27 of Finnish Legends. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Farno Jahangir. Finnish Legends by R. I. Wind. Chapter 27. As soon as the purchase was completed, Kullervo asked Almarinen and his wife to give him some work for the next day. So they decided to make him a shepherd. But the wife, once the rainbow maiden, did not like their new servant. So she baked him a cheat loaf, a very thick loaf, half of barley, half of oatmeal, and with a great flint stone in the center, and around the flint stone was melted butter. Then he gave it to Kullervo and told him not to eat it until he was out on the pasture ground. The next morning, Elmarinen's wife showed Kullervo the cattle and bade him take them to the open glades among the forests, where they would find food in abundance. Then she addressed the prayer to Ukko that she would guard the flock in case the shepherd should neglect them, and she sought the aid too of all the goddesses of the forest and the daughters of summer and the spirits of the fountains and the brooks to care for her cattle and watch over them. And she also sang a spell to keep away the bears from coming and devouring them. And when all these prayers and spells were ended, she sent Kullervo off with the hares. Kullervo drove them off to their pastures in the woods, carrying his lunch in a basket on his arm. And, and as he walked, he sang of his hard lot as a slave, and how he was given only the scraps and crusts to eat, while his master and mistress fed on honey, cakes, and wheat and biscuit. At length the time came for him to eat his luncheon, and he sat down and drew the cheat loaf from the basket, but instead of eating it at once, he turned it carefully over and over in his hands and thought, many loaves are fine to look at on the outside, but are nothing but chaff inside, and he drew out his knife to try the loaf. This knife was the one thing that his mother had kept of all her father's possessions, and Kullervo looked upon it as something sacred. Now as he plunged it into the chief loaf, it hit right upon the hard flint in the center and broke in several pieces. Then Kullervo sat down and began to weep over his loss and to ponder how he should revenge it. But the raven was sitting in a tree nearby and overhead him talking to himself. And the raven said, Why art thou so distressed, Kullervo? Drive the hair away, one half to the wolves and the other half to the bears dance so that they may all be devoured and then when it is time to return home call together the wolves and bears and make them look like cattle by thy magic art and drive them home for thy mistress to milk thus thou wilt repay this insult at these words kullervo jumped up and did as the raven had said and when the sun was setting in the west kullervo hastened homeward driving bears and wolves before him but by a magic spell he made them look like cattle and as he went he said to them seize my hateful mistress when she comes to milk the cattle and tear and rent her in pieces and he took a cow horn and made a boggle of it and blew till the hills rang to announce his return when he reached the courtyard Almarina's wife greeted him joyfully, for it was late and she had feared that something had happened. And she told her oldest maid servant to go and milk the cows, as she herself was busy. But Kullervo said, Thou shouldst go thyself, for the cows are in better condition tonight than they have ever been before. And so she went, and when she saw them, she cried out in wonder, Truly my cattle are beautiful tonight, for their hair glistens like the fur of linexes, and is soft as ermine skin. With these words she seated herself to begin milking, but all at once the wolves and bells appeared in their true shapes and began to tear her to pieces. Then she cried out to Kullervo when she saw what he had done, but he answered, If I have done evil, thou hast done still greater evil, for thou hast baked a stone inside my bread, and I have broken on it my knife, the only relic of my mother's people. Then Almarinen's wife began to beg him to aid her and promised him the best of everything to eat and that he should never have to work again. But Kullervo would not listen to her prayers but rejoiced at her agony and then the wolves and bears made one more onset and she fell and died. Such was the end of the beauteous rainbow maiden for whom so many had woed and who had become the pride and joy of Kalevala. End of chapter 27